Yo, what's going on, everybody? Tony here from Paradise Garage and LearnAutoBodyAndPaint.com. Um, just checking to see how everyone is doing and let me know about the audio and video. Um, if you could just type in the chat super quickly. Um, let me know if you guys can hear me and see me. Uh, give some quick feedback. And if you are a Learn Auto Body VIP member, um, just type in the chat, Learn Auto Body VIP member. Um, what's up, bro? What's up? I see Harold Schwinn coming in in the house. Uh, Richard Gomez, VIP from California. Arnold Ricchetti, VIP, North Carolina. Hello, everybody. Loud and clear, Tony. Awesome, awesome. What's up, bro? What's going on? So um, today's your time right now. Um, any auto body Q&A from non-VIP members or even VIP members, now is your chance to share your story and ask questions. Uh, we're all here to help each other out um, and move forward with their auto painting projects. Super, super fun. Uh, Richard Gomez says loud and clear, loud and clear. What's up? What's up? What's up? Awesome. So uh, Dan Swatsky, VIP, loud and clear. Awesome. Sounds good, guys. So what are you guys working on? I know Arnold's working on a couple projects. He's making money um, painting, you know, projects, motorcycles and cars and things for customers now, uh, which is super cool. Um, anybody else, VIP members working on, you know, projects you want to talk about? Let me know. Um, I'm working on a few projects starting back up again. Uh, sold a lawnmower that I custom painted on. When, when did I sell it? Yesterday? Sunday? Yeah. You know that custom lawnmower that I painted back in Texas? I sold that thing um, yesterday because <laughs> I have two of them. So we're going to actually be painting the other one, like some other candy color or whatever. And uh, you guys will be able to see that project as well. Is anybody hearing like like wind noise? I have a fan coming on me and I just want to make sure the audio is clear. Just let me know in the chat super quickly. Um, Arnold says, hey, brother, have a drip on single stage, same process uh, and clear coat, base coats, right? First time doing single stage. Uh, yes. So hopefully your single stage run wasn't a metallic run, uh, because if you run single stage metallic paints, okay, you could have a chance of literally seeing that metallic run, even if you sand it out and you flatten it out with 1500 grit, or maybe you started with 1200 grit and you ended up with 2000 grit or 2500 grit before you buffed it. Um, if it's a heavy metallic, it's possible that, you know, you're going to see that metallic run in the single stage. Even if you cut it flat and buff it, you might see something in it. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> but if it's, oh, there you go. Solid black. So solid black, you should not have a problem. Um, I've had instances where it turns a little grayish. Don't ask me why. It could just be, the, could have been the paint. It happened to me. I think once back in the day where I ran black single stage, I sanded it flat, um, but then I still saw a little drip mark, even though it was flat. It was like discolored, a discolored, you know, I wouldn't say light gray or dark gray, but it, it had a little grayish. It was still black, but it had a little grayish tinge to it. So um, it could have been just that case. And then I've had other times where we had solid colors, single stage. We were able to sand it flat and buff it with nothing visible. All right. So it might have just been that paint job, you know, because I, I only really had that issue once. I've had the metallic issue a couple times um, by by seeing the metallic run. Um, friends of mine cars as well. They painted it, had a few runs, sanded it. And then the only thing you could do that way is basically repaint that panel if you don't like you know, if you don't want to see that metallic run, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, okay, cool, cool, cool. Hopefully that helps, Arnold. What are you? What were you painting, Arnold? VIP Chuck Burnell, North Carolina. Sounds and looks good. Awesome, awesome. So, what kind of projects are you guys working on? Is it getting cold? Starting to get cold by you guys? Uh, on the East Coast or not yet? I don't think so. Not yet, right? 
motorcycle project. Cool. Uh, I'm going to go to the banners and I'm just going to say welcome learn auto body VIP members for tuning in with us today. And for all you newbies, how many newbies on never been tuned in before? Um, how many newbies on? Let me know. You can go ahead to learn auto body and paint.com to get some free auto body training. I'm going to drop a quick link for you guys so you guys can go there. Um, right over here. Um, Dan Swansky says he's restoring a 95 Chevy pickup. Cool. Cool. Okay, let's see. All right, so that link should be clickable for all the newbies tuning in that want to get some free auto body training. Um, hold on a second. So what else is new? What else is new, guys? What else is new? I've just been getting set up in the garage, uh, cleaning out the garage. My, my screen just like froze for a bit. I think we're still okay. Um, weeding out. I might sell a few items just to get, just to weed out. I'm um, thinking selling a Honda Grom, just, just flipping it. Um, it's completely custom painted. It looks good. Um, thinking of just getting rid of that. A few other things, maybe a pocket bike that I have here. And I was even considering selling the Chevelle. I don't know. Just, I, I got too much stuff. That's the issue, but I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Just madness, brother. Now they have Dr. Fauci. <laughs> Unbelievable. Whatever. I don't pay attention to that. It's Yeah, it is ridiculous. It's madness. Madness, what's happening? So, guys, just remember, this is your time. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if your auto body, if you think your auto body question is super newbie, whatever you know if you have any questions let me know um, we're here to talk about auto body and paint whatever you want to talk about if you guys want to kind of move into other topics like uh trading and crypto i'm all for that because that's i do that <laughs> in my spare time as well um, i love it it's a great extra source of income uh, it's been a great extra source of income for my family and i for years um but uh, yeah, don't sell the YSR. Yeah, that thing I don't plan to sell, Arnold. Actually, that thing's in my house on the side of my living room right now. It's it's a sentimental project build, and um, I'm not selling that thing. <laughs> Good one. Dave from VIP. What's up, Dave? Hope you're doing well. Any questions? Harold Schwinn. I sprayed two coats of base coat and two coats of clear. I sanded and buffed and it looks duller than before I did the process. What did I do wrong? Okay, what uh, grit, you know, what buffing pad you used? Maybe give me some more details on what type of pads you used uh, because you don't really want to use the white wool pad. It's a very coarse pad and it won't take out sand, uh, it won't take out swirl marks. So I'm not sure if you're still if you still have sand scratches that have to be melted together, or if you have a lot of swirl marks, two different things. Um, so it's very, it's, it's a little hard for me to answer the question, but I think, um, you know, you just have to put more compound on it and keep buffing. And also what type of compound are you using? Let me know what type of compound you're using and what type of pads you're using. Um, I don't recommend foam for the compound. Foam pads are tricky because if you don't know what you're doing, um, you're going to really quickly burn through your paint, especially on edges and corners with your foam pad. Uh, just letting you know. Uh, getting ready to re-clear my hood. What grit sandpaper should I use? Now, when you're saying re-clear, are you just going to be clearing over sanded clear coat or are you painting over a base coat like what are you re-clearing over you know not sure because if you're clearing on top of base coat freshly painted base coat 
you do not need to sand. You just clear right on top of it. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure. Just give me a little bit more, Bobby B. Yeah, so Arnold's Arnold's also trying to help. So, yeah, re-clear what? Give us existing clear coat. So if you're going to just clear over existing clear coat, I'm not sure if it's faded or if you, you know, did some body work on it. Um, but normally, and this is a, this is probably the most common question. I should make a, I should make a YouTube video just on this question. I think I will. Um, if you're just going to re-clear, make sure that your, your paint and your, your re-clearing over perf, a perfect paint job. Okay. You don't want to re-clear over old clear coat that's faded and tinged and, and you know, that's you feathered in some uh, flaking or whatever, because if you do that, it's not going to come out right. It'll come out. It'll look OK, but you're still probably going to see some of that oldness from the old clear. OK, so if you're going to be re-clearing just to re-clear, make sure your clear coat is sanded. I would say 800 grit is a good grit. OK, to to flow coat over to re-clear over. Um, but if you if you're clearing over a faded color. Okay. I would recommend spraying some new base coat on it and then clearing it. You know what I mean? Um, Bobby B. Okay. Over existing clear coat. We answered that. Charlie says name of soft pad that goes on uh, DA sander. Are you talking about an inner surface pad? Um, it's probably uh, what you're looking for. It's it's an inner surface pad. They come in different uh, softnesses and 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 uh, textures. Some of them are super like a real foam. Some of them are harder. Some of them could be like a neoprene. I like the neoprene uh, inner surface pads. Um, Harold Schwinn. I used a thousand up to two thousand grit sandpaper and then compound and wax. Looks dull. Okay, so uh, you should not wax or put any type of sealer on top of your compounded finish until unless you have a gloss finish. So after your compound phase, it should be pretty glossy. Okay, and then you put the swirl mark remover. You're finishing. You know, I use Arnold's been using another brand of uh, compound. He says it's good. I haven't had time to actually use it yet. Um, but I use a two-stage, uh, the 3M perfected two-stage system. So you got the compound and then you got the swirl mark remover. Okay. And you only put the swirl mark remover on after you get a pretty good gloss. So if you put wax on it already, you're going to have to basically just wash the wax off with like a degreaser, take the wax off. You might have to sand it again with 2000 just to, to wash that off. And then you're going to have to compound it until you get a better gloss. So the compound phase, what you're basically doing um, on 2000 grit or 2500 grit or 3000 grit is you're melting. Okay, You're heating up the clear coat and you're melting with the compound the clear coat together. You're, you're melting the sand scratches, the 2000 sand scratches Okay, that, that, that look like this. You're melting them together so they fuse and turn into a, a beautiful shine. That's the only, that's all you're doing when you're buffing. Okay. Um, and then once you get to that glossy state, then you could use your foam pad and use your, uh, your finishing glaze, which is the swirl mark remover. And that comes to a super gloss. And then you could do your spray wax on top of that. And I like, I don't like using old school waxes. I stopped using them years ago, turtle wax, any type of carnauba wax that's in those cans that you basically wipe on and wipe on with a rag or a micro, micro, microfiber cloth. Uh, I like the clear spray waxes. Okay. Um, there's a lot of brands out there. Um, I use Zen wax. They sell it at Zula.com. It's a very, very good um, compound. And there's something in it called, what is it called? There's something in this special. There's a patent. There's a patented nanoparticle. 
just trying to read this for you. It's, it's called Poly Charger. It's called Poly Charger. And literally, like, I use this stuff in all my cars. I'll drop a link here if you guys want to check it out. Um, but it literally seals. It's kind of like, I wouldn't call it ceramic coating, but it's kind of like it, okay? It protects your car for up to 10 to 20 car washes. Like, you, they literally tested this stuff. Um, it'll protect your car. After you wash it, you put it on. It won't wash off over time. It just, it literally holds up for a very, very long time. You might want to check it out. Anyway, um, let's see. Clear coat solutions. That's what Arnold's talking about. CSI. One product, two pad. Tony, and I just actually received a certificate for them at taking a test. Product is awesome. That's pretty cool, Arnold. I'd like to talk to you more about that once we get, um, uh, once we start getting into to that because I need to bang out some paint projects so I can get to the refinishing stages of color sanding and buffing. You know what I mean? I'm not even at that level yet um, in my projects that I have lined up. So we're, we're going to be getting there. Um, is more expensive paint clear really worth the money? Uh, it depends, David Yates. I say if you want to kind of save money, you can save money on base coat. Okay, you don't have to get the highest you know, the most expensive base coat, you can go with something like Omni or Omni Plus, okay, instead of going with PPG Deltron base coat, which is very expensive. Um, if you want to splurge, I would say put put a little bit money into clear coat. You know, there's, there's you could really get a good clear coat. House of Color, I like. Um, PPG Deltron, I like. Uh, you know, there's a lot of clear coats out there. But I've started recently using uh, Acme, by Sherman, uh, Sherman Williams sells it. I don't think it's a Sherman Williams brand, but it's a, a product that Sherman Williams sells called Acme. I've been using, it's a very good clear coat. It's inexpensive, literally like a hundred, less than 120 bucks a gallon. Um, probably a lot less for you guys in the States. And um, no dieback. I painted the Grom with this stuff. Oh my God, the clear coat laid out fantastic super nice like i would use that thing on a on a full full car paint job no problem you got it harold awesome awesome guys so what's up dudes any newbies on just tuning in for the first time i know we got a good good amount of vips on Sorry, guys. I'm just looking at my screen here. Um, all right, cool. What's up, Ben? Any any uh, questions on your auto body projects? Anybody? Anyone? Bueller? Another another way, guys, to send me uh, detailed questions is to just basically record no longer than a a two minute video. You know, 90 seconds is better just on what you're working on, your question. Send the video to Tony at learnautobodyandpaint.com. Um, I will post Tony at you could send pictures, video, and a very detailed question. You know, don't just ask me something vague, but tell me what you did, you know. If you, if you have paint reactions or whatever, tell me what you sanded it with, you know, if you wiped it with wax and grease remover before you painted, you know, you got to let me know the more you give me on what you did and why you, why you're having that issue, the more I can be like, oh, this is why, you know what I mean? So the more you give me, the more I can give you, uh, when replying to, you know, emails with, with a lot of images or video. Um, and then what I could do is make a video and reply back to you. 
actually I should send that guy, send that out to an, um, and to my list, to all of you guys on there. Uh, oh, so everybody's asking Tony, what is the next project going to be? So the next project, the next big project, um, was supposed to be my, my green van out there. But I don't know if you guys know, my mom's on the way here, but I let her use my BMW i3 uh, two weeks ago. And she literally got into a four car accident with it. Yeah, I'm glad she's OK. Um, we'll probably make a video, a YouTube video with her in it. It's an emergency auto body repair update. So we're going to be working on the BMW i3. I'm just waiting on the insurance right now uh, for the claims adjuster to get back to me. Um, I'm recording the whole process. I already recorded taking it apart. Um, and I'll, I'll go. It has frame damage on both sides. Um, let's actually go to it right now. Um, and I took all the parts off already. So, and I didn't order the parts yet. I'm just waiting on this insurance claims adjuster to get back to me on the, on the quote. I don't want to go ordering everything just yet, but it's, you know, after, after we get that settled, it's starting to freaking pour right now. Jesus raining all over my computer, but there it is right there. Hold on. It's really raining guys. Not making it up. I can't be out there. I can't be out there with uh, with my laptop. Anyway, here's the Chevelle. Um, we got my 1998, I believe, Honda Elite S. Super cool bike. Daihatsu. I'm still waiting on my distributor cap that I ordered on eBay. So we got that coming. This it just needs a little a, a basic tune up. So we're waiting for some tune up parts for that. The Grom here I might sell. Um, so yeah. Okay, let's see. Tony, check out Dynaco Econo Clear. It was about a hundred bucks for a gallon kit. Works well. No dye back and dries clear in the cup. No yellow. Awesome. That's that sounds pretty good. Yeah, it's really starting to pour right now. I think Allie should be home by now. Allie should be home. So yeah, Bobby B, back to uh, what my next project is going to be. It's going to be... Come on, Noah. What's up? What's up? The BMW i3. So we're going to be putting a body kit on the front of it. You know, change it up a little, and then we're going to do a full, complete paint job on it. I'm not sure what color yet, but uh, we're going to do a custom custom color on it. Okay. Just double checking any time metal shows through. I need an etching primer first. Can't just use, you could use 2K. If it's a small, a little bit of metal showing, no big deal. Um, if it's a big panel that you're doing, then I would do an etching primer on top of that. Okay, so small, like little chips like this, you know, or like a little area, you know, no worries. Man, it's really coming down. I can't even show you guys the BMW. <laughs> are you gonna get? You guys are gonna get that in an update video anyway. So. We'll have a YouTube video um, coming out with my mom. Do you want to see the uh, culprit? I think my mom was on last time. But uh, we'll just give you guys an update what's going on and, and you know, get into that project. Man, it just started coming down. All right, guys, so I'm going to drop some quick links here um, for all you newbies just tuning in to learn auto body um, paradise garage. If you want to get more free training on auto body, just hit up learn auto body and paint .com. I'm posting a link there. And um, if you guys are looking for good spray guns, same spray guns that I use uh, to paint all of my projects and a lot of our VIP members use these guns as well. Um, you can check out Zula.com um, and check out the Atom X spray guns. 
Um, I'm going to use an isolator on project. Believe it's an alcohol thinner base. Am I going to have problems wiping it down afterwards? Um, I'm not sure. What do you mean wiping it down? Are you going to wipe it down with wax and grease remover or what do you mean? Arnold said, Tony, remember that part kit got messed up? I sent it down, repainted it, resprayed problem solved. Yeah. I wonder what that was. That's kind of weird looking. It looked like condensation, water, water bubbles or air bubbles to me. It's kind of weird. Uh, Carlos VIP member going to paint my car. going to sand it up to 600 grit. Do I wet sand only 600 or 400 and do the wet sanding dual action sander? Or should I say wet sand by hand? So, um, there's multiple ways to skin a cat, you know, if you're VIP. So if you went through the VIP trainings and a lot of my little mini projects in there that you can see, you see what I do. I like to, I like to kind of cheat, save time, use my DA. Uh, with 400, you know, get it down to where it needs to go, dry sanding. And then I like to finish off by hand sanding, wet sanding. That's just me. I like to just be able to see the water. You know, I like to have the water on the panel and just wet sand that you could be using a block um, or your hands if you're comfortable just to just to get it nice and, and 400 ready for paint. So I like to finish with 400 because as you use your 400 and you're going around the car, it's going to you know, wear out. It's going to be turned into 500, 600. So 400 to me is the best paper to use. Okay. Um, and that's all you need. Okay. So that's pretty much it. You could finish with dry sanding if you want. So the problem with dry sanding is sometimes, you know, you're going to get some caked up cakiness on your sandpaper. And you're going to be sanding and you're going to see like that the cakiness will just put like little shiny streaks in your in your sand marks. And it just doesn't look right. You know what I mean? Or you can have pigtails from your DA, you know. So that's why I don't like finishing with dry sanding. I like to just get it down to where it needs to go with dry sanding and then finish with wet sanding by hand. Um, especially if you're working on something nice, like if, if, you know, when I end up, I'm most likely going to be painting this thing. Um, every panel is going to be done by hand after, after we use the machine. Okay. So we do body work. We use the rough draft. We use our straight sander. You know, we're going to be using this guy a lot, our straight sander, because on old cars like this, we got a lot of flat panels, right? So if I have some waviness in the doors, we're going to be kind of cutting it like this, right? Brrr, getting it there. But then final, I'll be checking everything with my hand and then, you know, wet sanding by hand just to get every panel nice and straight. Because if we look right here, we do have some door dings. You know, not bad. Uh, you might be able to see it like that. Yeah, see it right there? So, yeah, just uh, just giving you a heads up. Um. What am I looking at? Remember that part I messed up? Yup, yup, yup. I love my Adam X guns. I own four of them. Uh, grease remover. Yes. Uh, I would be careful putting wax and grease remover on any type of 1K product. Okay. Uh, because I definitely know that it will wipe off 1K primer. So if you have like 1K primer on your car somewhere and you wax and grease that, the wax and grease remover is going to melt it. So you might just want to use like a window cleaner. I don't think a window cleaner has the solvents in it like a wax and grease remover does to actually eat it up. So if you're going to be doing that, use a window cleaner. I like Sprayway. It comes in an aerosol can. Where is mine? Probably in the house. You guys know what I'm talking about. Sprayway, right? Uh, you could use that. Um, you should use wax and grease remover before primer, after primer, before paint. So... Wax and grease remover can be used through all the steps, okay? Um, before primer, if you want to, not really necessary. If you just sand it, blow everything off, and it's clean, you could just prime right on top of it. Um, but mainly after primer, before paint, 
Okay, so after your primer is all sanded out, flattened out, looking good, okay, that's when you want to put your wax and grease remover on it. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna wipe everything down, okay, super nicely. You're gonna wipe it all down, and then you're gonna tack rag it, and then you're gonna spray it. All right. Yup, yup, yup. All right. So, any last questions, guys? Any last questions <clears throat> before I head out today? <clears throat> Let's see. Mm, so, anyway, one last time, I'm going to drop the link here to learn auto body and paint.com. If you guys want some free auto body training, check that out. Um, it's going to come with some email newsletters with some links to videos and content and whatnot. Uh, if you guys are looking for awesome spray guns, check out Zula.com. And um, it also comes with a cool gun bud ultra lighting system uh, with every spray gun purchased at Zula.com. So, um, yeah. So, guys, thank you for uh, putting up with me and waiting for me. It's been a while. I know it's been a little while since we are, you know, since, since we've been doing new auto body projects. I promise you we're going to get back into it. Uh, it's just been super busy. And this is not this is not like my day to day thing. I don't do this anymore every day like i used to like a job you know i don't i don't do it as a job but i do it as a hobby but i do have years and years of professional experience doing this stuff okay and i love teaching it so, and we will be doing you know we will be taking this thing apart we're pulling the glass unfortunately i think i have to pull my vinyl top because when i had it in the shipping container a, a bar that was on top kind of messed up this corner and ruined it you could see that and then I had two two by fours basically sitting here. So I built a frame around this thing and I didn't bolt. <clears throat> I didn't uh, freaking bolt in the bar that was going over the trunk. I think I was I just forgot about it. So this the, the rack that was sitting behind here literally fell on top of the car. So I got two small dents here, one here, one over there. You probably see it um, from the two by fours. And then this damage here but the rest of the car is solid everything on top was okay nothing fell on the car on the top nothing fell on the car on the front um it's all good you know but um you know stuff happens so oh guys here's the here's the bmw it stopped raining let me show you the bmw quick <clears throat> so this is what it, it doesn't look bad but it's pretty bad you can see that um, the frame is actually buckled on both sides in here. So we're going to have to do some repairs. Radiator got shot with plastic in it, still plastic in it. Um, this bar is bent. Front brace is bent. Um, and everything else. The whole, the both headlights are cracked. Here's the front. I mean, cracks everywhere. You know, the whole, whole thing was busted. The radiator um, shroud, which is electronic, that opens and closes. Um, I got all the headlights in the back here, some of the parts. You know, everything cracked. All the mounts for the headlights. This one, I think, underneath is busted. There's a hole in it. Not this one, the other one. But yeah, so, <clears throat> so we'll get to it and um, we'll probably custom paint this thing too. What I would like is for them to salvage it actually. If they salvage the car, then uh, I'll get my 15, 16 grand for it and then I'll buy it back from them for around 10%. It'll be a salvage, but it's still my car. I'll get it. I'll repair it. I'll get it salvage uh, certified and I'll have my BMW back in tip top shape for probably under six grand. You know what I mean? Or seven grand. So that's something I am hoping happens. If not, I'm probably going to get around eight thousand dollars for the damage, um, which I could probably fix for about half that. What's up, Max? Nice to see you on. Restoring a 1994 C15. 
C1500. Thanks, Tony. Regards VIP from Tasmania. Whoa, super cool. I like your bus. Cool. Thank you, Tony, uh, for taking the time. Chat. Peace. Aloha. Arnold, thank you for tuning in. A lot of people tuning in now. Well, while we still have 27 people on the call, does anybody have any last minute auto body and paint questions? Um, we could talk about it right now uh, before I head out. What's up, Max? I remember you. you used to tune in when I was in Texas a good few years ago. I remember you. Must have been like three, four years ago, right? Give or take. <clears throat> and I think you commented on that lawnmower project because I remember your name, Max and Max. Um, I just sold that thing yesterday. Nala. Oh, thank you, Nala. Nala's taking... Thank you. Take this off of my foot. Thank you. She took off a sticky off my foot. Come here. You're so sweet. Come over here. Up. Come on up. Come on. Come on up. Come on. Say hi to everybody. Look how big she is. Come here. Come here. Come up. Yeah. Come up. There you go. Yeah. Look at Nala. Look how big she is. She got huge. Her head used to fit in my palm. She's a brute. She's a brute. She's probably like 65 pounds now, maybe more. Yeah. Dude, she got huge. <laughs> I don't even pick her up anymore. <laughs> Sometimes I do just because I want to squeeze her and hug her. But uh, she stinks. <laughs> I got to wash her. Look, her and the cat get along. They always play fight together. It's hilarious. Look. Uh, what is too long for an air hose to paint cars? Well, David, it depends on how much pressure you got coming out of that hose, you know, but if you have a 50 footer, I think that's, it's fine in a garage, a 50 footer. If you have a couple hundred feet of hose, I think that's unnecessary, <laughs> but normally, you know, a 30 footer, 50 footer in your garage, I got a 50 footer and, you know, in my garage with my compressor, I got no problems at all. This is my setup right here. I got a 60 uh, gallon cobalt and it's a pretty quiet motor, a lot quieter than my other compressor um, in Dallas, which I sold to my tenant. But here's my hose setup right there. So yeah, waving from East Texas, what's up? Waving back. What's up, Louis Silva, VIP, what's up? What's up? Come here now. Come here. Oh, God. Look how big she is. Look how big. Look at her. Now I'm all stink. Ugh. You need a bath. You need to go to the beach. I gotta take you to the beach. All right. I'm going to head out, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, and I, I hope to see you on next week. Peace out. Have a good evening. Take care. Aloha. Have a good, have a good evening, guys. 50 foot hose, 60 on. Yeah, you're fine, David. All right. Cheers, guys. Have a good evening. There's that link again to Zula. And... Um, Another link to learnautobodyandpaint.com. Thank you guys for tuning in. Arnold, thank you. Talk to you guys later and uh, have a good evening, guys. Peace.